I'm out here at the ranch this morning checking calves and it appears I have a problem that needs to be dealt with. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. For me it was yesterday, for you guys it was in the last video, but number 17 gave birth to a calf right here and, and right where she did that, number 33 and her calf that had been born several hours earlier they, they were kind of with her here. They were all together. And what I'm seeing this morning is both of the, those cows are trying to claim number 33's calf as their own. And number 17's calf has been forgotten about. This is extremely strange. I don't think that I've ever had this happen before. Um, and I'm pretty sure that I saw number 17's calf nursing on her yesterday. So you would have thought that would have been enough to make the bond and we wouldn't be having this problem. But it's pretty evident that both cows are trying to claim 33's calf and this little guy is just sitting here by himself. So what I'm gonna try to do is kind of do a distressed calf call, see if I can get number 17's attention. Maybe she'll come over here, maybe the calf will stand up and everything will be fine. But if that's not what happens, then I need to lock 17 and this calf up together and kind of force that bond. Because you don't want to sit here by yourself with no mama, do you? I don't seem to be getting any interest from 17. So this is great. We got hammered with rain last night and it's muddy in here. I hate to uh, to bring that calf in there just because of the mud, but actually where I put the wood chips in, the ground is fairly solid, although it is punched out pretty bad. Uh, so yeah, I, I hate to do it, but when the other option is sit out here and starve to death, that doesn't seem so bad now. And I'm sure it's gonna be difficult to get number 17 broken off of this calf because she thinks it's hers. So there's both cows. And here's the calf. Everybody loves this calf. Yeah, it'd be easier than I thought. My hope is that once we get up to the corral, I'll be able to break the calf and number 33 off and not get them up in there. But I don't know. If I can just get 17 in the corral by herself, then I think we'll have it made. And I can't help but wonder who the calf has chosen. Because calf seems like both cows too. So I don't know. It's kind of strange. Go in there and don't take that calf with you. Ah, that's exactly what I didn't want. Go out. Show your baby the way out. All right, I know, I didn't get hardly any of that on film, but she was going the right way, and it's pretty hard to change directions in this mud, so I just had to chase her. So, we got her locked up, that's the good news. Now, I gotta figure out how am I gonna get that calf in there. So I'm trying to think, how can I do this without carrying the calf through all this mud? Trying to walk him up here would just be a fool's errand. It would, it, it would probably not even work. If it did, it would take forever. What I want to do is figure out a way to get him in the yard there, and then I'll have good footing to just carry him up around the barn. I can drop him right there in the pen with her. The problem is getting him over the fence or through the fence. Let's uh, let's think outside the box here and. As I sit here trying to think of how to do this best, I'm reminded of a little hole in the fence over here where the cattle have pushed the boards down 
and been reaching through trying to nibble on some grass and I just wonder if I might not be able to get the calf through right here. Well, I've decided I don't like this idea. There's too much barbed wire. I don't want the calf to get tangled up in it and hurt himself. So I keep trying to see a way around this and there just isn't one. It's just a simple fact that I just got to carry him through the mud. That's it. So let's do it. This little guy is heavy and it's really tough carrying him through that mud. I've only got about 50 more feet to go, but I'll tell you what, it's the worst 50 feet. The mud's the deepest here and I'm not looking forward to it. I was gonna go and get my other camera, but she is cooing to this calf and acting real interested in it. So I was gonna get her in the shoot and help him nurse. But I think instead, while she is showing this level of interest, I'm just gonna put them together and maybe they'll take care of themselves. Do you feel like walking at all? Huh? You feel like walking? There you go. There's your mommy. Why don't you go get her? Let's get you over there. There you go. 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 Well, the calf looks like it wants to nurse. She looks receptive to it, and I notice him peeing, which is a good sign because if nothing's going in, nothing's coming out. So I'm pretty confident that I saw him nurse yesterday, shortly after he was born which is the most critical feeding. Hopefully, if I just keep them in close quarters for a day or so, they'll get it figured out and he'll be all right. We'll come back in a couple hours to check on these two and see how they're doing. I might assist him with nursing one time just to kind of be sure that he's getting that nutrition, but I, I don't think we're quite there yet. All right, well, it's the next day now and the progress on these two is, number one, this cow does not like being locked up. She has just been a terror the whole time that she's been in here. And I'm starting to think that having her locked up is actually doing more harm than good now. The good news is, is that we're on day three of this calf's life and he's still alive. So that in addition with the fact that I have witnessed him pee a couple of times tells me that he is nursing, although I've never actually seen him do it. The problem is, is that every time I try to look in here, she starts doing this, just pacing, pacing the pen. And I've even kind of snuck around the corner to look at her and she, see what she's doing. And it's the same thing. So she never holds still. I don't know how that calf could nurse even if he wanted to, which I'm sure he does. Hopefully the bond has been cemented now and the calf now has enough strength that 
you know, she can't go off and ditch them. Usually the trouble is the first couple days of life, the calves don't have a lot of energy. So it's really easy for them to get left behind. But after they nurse a couple of times, they get that strength and then mama can't get away from them anymore because they'll just follow her. But let's reintroduce these two into the herd before this cow tears up this corral even worse. And um, the other thing, I need to get them out of here because I need this corral for something else now. There you go. There you go. There you go. Well, for today at least, they seem to have been mothered up pretty well. The calf was running with her. They were sticking right together. So that, that's what you want to see. Um, I was a little bit nervous about whether or not the bond had been cemented yet but it looks like it is so we'll just have to keep an eye on them and i think they're going to be all right that cow will settle down when she's out here in her herd she'll feel a lot better and they're not going to be in the mud out here so i i mean i think we got this resolved but you just never know so i want to talk a little bit about the mud out here because i know i'm going to get comments about it and everybody's gonna have the solution of what I can do to get rid of it. And I appreciate you guys trying to help, but the thing of it is, you got rain and you got dirt, like there's gonna be mud. This is just kind of a freak thing this year. And unfortunately, it's just what we have to deal with. I'm not blind. I see that it's bad. I know that it's bad. I'm out here running through it just like they are, and it's not fun for any of us, so. This again makes me think that pushing my calving season out a month would would avoid this in any form every year. I mean, I just keep thinking like if I was getting calves starting in April or middle of April, I wouldn't be dealing with any of this right now. And the other thing that I would like to point out too is that the vast majority of the time, the cattle are out on this grass right here. So they're not slopping through this mud. It just so happens that where most of the videos take place are in here because this is the working facility. But their environment where they spend most of their time is a lot better than what you guys are seeing on camera. The cattle at the winter pasture don't deal with any of this. And it's really too bad that the winter pasture wasn't a little bit bigger and I could just take everybody over there. They do have to walk through this mud once a day to get up to the feeder, but the feeder is on concrete. So, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, walking through here once a day is not that bad, but I understand that the videos kind of make it seem like they're up in here all the time, but they're not. It's several days later now since turning number 17 and her calf out in the field. And since that time, we've had several more new arrivals, but the, the big news here is that she's doing an awesome job with that calf now. She's been glued to it since I've turned them out and I have not seen her messing with number 33's calf anymore. And that's awesome. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.